Okay, what's up guys? Today we're talking about mistakes you're making on TikTok that's preventing you to grow. And to be very honest, before we jump in, um, I'm a little hungry slash hangry right now. So if I'm a bit too spicy giving these tips, it's because I'm hungry, not because I don't like you guys. For those who are like, who the fuck is this bitch? My name's Jade. I like making marketing videos sitting on the edge of a cliff, but I also have 1.8 million weekly viewers on my TikTok and I have around 360,000 followers. So I think I'm credible enough to talk about these subjects. I also have a company called X8 Media where we manage creators and brand campaigns that have millions of followers. So like I said, I, I really think I sometimes have really bad imposter syndrome, but I do think I can speak on the subject. So now that we're done flexing, let's just talk a little bit about what you might be facing. So let's say you're working really hard on your content and all of a sudden, boom, shadow banned. You're not getting any views. This is very, very common. I personally manage other accounts in mine and I'm pretty sure I was shadow banned like 20 times last year. If you're wondering what shadow ban means, it's basically when TikTok or any platform stops promoting your account to their explore or for you page. The for you page is how you get new viewers onto your account. So for a lot of small businesses or influencers, it's a little annoying when the platform itself isn't doing what it's supposed to do, which is promote your work to new audiences. Now, how do you tell if you're shadow Banned. The honest truth is there is no way to tell if you're shadow banned. I know it's really scary and my best tip if you do want to see if you're possibly shadow banned is create a creator account and if you go to a single post and you hit insights you're able to see if there's a for you page traffic source. If there's zero percent on the for you page traffic source you're most likely shadow banned. Now before you're like Jada what the fuck how do I fix this? This is super common and there's not much you can honestly do other than to wait it out. So the first mistake you're making okay now that we went on that tangent is you're being impatient with TikTok. Every single account, no matter you have one follower, 10 million followers, will get shadow banned at some point. Whether you're violating the rule or the platform makes a mistake, it's completely normal. And the worst thing you can do is let it stop you from making content. Sometimes you can appeal your videos if you get it taken down, but if you feel like your account is shadow banned, it will typically go away in three to four weeks. So on the first mistake, don't freak out. I work with this one creator, King Science, on TikTok. He has 10 million followers and he had like an account video that got shot out of band and the next video did 10 million views. So like you just have to basically punch through this bullshit. And I know it's so annoying to say, but there's not much you can do other than keep going and make better content. Now, I know that was pretty depressing. <laughs> I don't know why I started the video with the most depressing tip. I'm sure you guys literally click on this video to be like, oh, she's gonna give me a helpful tip. And the first thing I say is like, you can't do anything. So let's go to step number two, another mistake that you can fix is replying to comments. Now, say you're shadow banned. Say you're not getting views. A reason why you might not be getting views is because you're not retaining people back to your page. So replying to comments, not just in like the type type way, but in the video format is a game changer. I personally never replied to comments because I thought it was lame and that it was enough to just comment back. But ever since I replied to comments, that's when my account grew from, you know, averaging a thousand views per video to a million. Exhibit A, I made a video of me responding to someone asking me where do I normally surf and that video got 1.8 million views. So the reason why I believe this works and the reason why I believe not a lot of people do it is because they don't believe every comment matters. Every comment does matter on TikTok because you can turn a comment, reply to it as a video and that video can be content that will be shared with your audiences and your audience loves it when you're engaging with them on a deeper level. You need to involve the community. TikTok is based and built on culture and trends and people. So you need to be able to engage with people on a deeper level. So my recommendation is replying to comments. All right, the third mistake you're making is you're being too perfect. Listen, Cassandra, I get it, okay? You don't wanna show your acne scars. You don't wanna show, you know, when you just woke up, you look a little smelly and musty. I get it, you don't wanna show the imperfect sides of you. But here's the thing about TikTok. When I mentioned it's built around people, it's genuinely built on imperfect people. You can take Charlie D'Amelio, for example. Her dance videos for a majority of them are not high production content. It's just her dancing in her bathroom. People like authenticity. People like to see what's relatable to them. So my best tip is stop over editing your TikTok. It's super weird, but I've seen a lot of people like over edit their TikToks in a, in a positive way. But if you're not growing from it, you might want to cut down on the editing. You know, TikTok is not Instagram. You don't have to have a perfect filter. You don't need to look beautiful. Hey guys, it's Jay from the future. I just wanted to say that there are some exceptions with this rule. If you're a hot model or you're an animator or you make films, you might want to disregard this 
tip. What I'm trying to say is not put in time into your videos. It's just figure out how to leave in parts of your video that's imperfect to you, but to others is authenticity and vulnerability. So if you're an animator and you know you want your, your background to be perfect, maybe leave a weird little Among Us character in the back so people can look at those details and find it relatable. So just, just something to keep in mind. Okay, bye. One of my most popular videos is literally me talking about my pooping problems. This video has 1 million views and I'm talking about my pooping problems. I'm embarrassed yet surprised that it worked and it just shows you that real honest conversations do the best on TikTok. So whether it's being as simple as stop wearing makeup or maybe over editing, it's really important just to whip out your camera and document the moments that are raw and honest. So if you do make educational content or more structured content, try your best to relax a little, chillax, chill out and be yourself. You're not being controversial enough, okay? Here is where I know people are gonna yell at me in the comments. I think it's important to do small little things that piss people off. Now, I'm not talking about being mean to someone, okay? No negative attitude in 2021. But what I'm talking about is kind of like how I said, it's important to be imperfect. You kind of want to say things that don't make sense. And let me give you an example, okay? So I made this video of me trying Costco food and I was wearing my shirt inside out. I genuinely do wear my clothes inside out. Like people know like since middle school, like if I wanted a black t-shirt, but the only t-shirt I had was like a black graphic tee, I would literally wear it inside out so I have a new t-shirt. Try it out, don't judge until you try it. It's a great way to expand your closet. Anyways, I made a video of me trying Costco food. Now, normally if I made a maybe, you know, trying haul video, it would get like a thousand views. But because I wore my shirt inside out, there were like hundreds of comments, people saying, why is your shirt inside out? And I just said, yo, it's fashion chill but i noticed in that moment that when you do small things that the audience can pick up on and people comment and they kind of react to it it actually boosts engagement because the algorithm on tiktok is all based on people right and if people are commenting liking and watching it multiple times because they're trying to see like whoa why is your shirt inside out it will help get more views and grow your page and appear on more for you pages i have a whole course if you're curious about tiktok marketing i will link it below it's with a company called Oberlo. so if you want to see more detailed step by step on how the algorithm works you guys can check that out. Now, I'm not encouraging you to literally like not wear clothes or like have your shirt inside out, but I am encouraging you is just find the weird things that you do and you make it into your content. My last example of this that I think is a bit more easy is if you have a weird thing in your house, I have this weird car lock basically that I shared on my TikTok that basically locks your car from the outside and people went crazy on it. They were like, what the fuck is that car lock? I really want that. And it shows you that if you show weird things and objects in your life, people are curious about it and they ask. So whether it's your clothes or things you say or things you mention, try to find what makes you unique. If you're struggling to figure out what's unique about you, I would recommend to ask your friends, when you think about me, what are the three things you think about? And this will help you understand your personality and persona. As much as you don't want to be hated on the internet, for looking stupid being stupid gets views and i'm not like trying to abuse it it's just like do the weird shit that makes you you and for me it's wearing my clothes inside out okay the next mistake you're making is deleting your tiktoks that fail i am honestly a bitch about this okay i always delete things that don't work i try to hide my imperfections i want to look cool in front of you guys basically meaning if my videos don't get past 10,000 views i will hide them on my friends only and basically privating them is a big l because sometimes on tiktok it takes three to four weeks for a tiktok to pop off a really good example of this is this surfing video i have right here it's me with my surfboard the first week i got a thousand views on it max i think only 100 or so likes and then four weeks later because i had other videos pop off in my surfing world that video now has over 120,000 views. So don't give up and don't be a bitch like me that kept deleting their posts. Be really, really patient and you have to trust the process. There's a book by Seth Godin called Shipping Creative Work, which I recommend. And basically Seth Godin, who is a really successful entrepreneur and writer says that there's a difference between a good decision and a good outcome. A good decision is skill plus the odds of the outcome working. And a good outcome is regardless of your skill, it's the odds of something working, right? You have no control on the outcome. As much as we think we can implement these 20 so tips and become a TikTok star, you have no control, right? A lot of TikTok is algorithm it's luck, it's timing. So the most important thing is to differentiate those things. You wanna focus on making good decisions because that's what you can't control. What you can't control is the good outcomes. And it's just so important not to take things personally. Like I sometimes cry at my views when it's not above a thousand views or something. And I just empathize so hard with y'all. It's so, so hard to differentiate your personal and professional self, but we have to make that a priority in order to be successful because the process is more important than the outcome. Wow.
Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. All right, I will take your admission tickets. You can Venmo me $30, you're welcome. I'm really joking. I love making videos on YouTube, sharing my experience. If you do enjoy this video so far though, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, because I'm really hungry. My next tip and slash mistake you're making is you're in your room too much. I know, this is a little triggering. Maybe your mom told you this when you were in high school that you don't hang out with enough friends and now you're hearing some random Asian lady on YouTube scream to you that you're always inside too much. Okay, I get it, I'm sorry, I did not mean to trigger you, but the point is you need to get out of your house. The moment I started making content outside in the public, whether it's showing people my scenery, right? Or showing people how I surf or get ready, the views went out up the door. I, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to say you need to travel the world to be successful, but just literally go outside, shoot in a different location. I think because of quarantine, everybody's shooting indoors in a you know really plain landscape is kind of the norm. So I think the key though is if there's a lot of texture in your video, or you're outside, or you're doing something kind of fun, you know, safely, social distance, of course. A lot of users appreciate it more because it's just a bit more rare. I genuinely think everyone's tired of seeing the same fucking like bathroomish like. YouTube bedroom landscape. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like a, you, you know what I'm talking about. So just get outside. All right guys, the seventh mistake you're making, and this is probably the most insulting. And I'm, I apologize in advance if you take it the wrong way, but you need to have a personality and show what makes you unique. This is being vulnerable, okay? If you're not vulnerable on TikTok, it's really hard to stand out. And a lot of TikTok is not rocket science. I'm not explaining a new algorithmic feature to get more likes and shares, like no. This is basic human psychology. And I did not take any proper education on psychology, but I have been broken up with many boys in high school, so that's probably the closest thing I have to human relationships. The point is, you want to be someone that is memorable. And marketing is all about having things that are fucking specific. If you're too general with yourself and you just introduce yourself as, hey, I'm Jade and I make surfing videos, no one gives a fuck. And I know that's harsh, but the thing with a lot of creators I've seen, especially in makeup or educational content or marketing content is we need to be spicy. We need to show ourselves. A lot of TikTok is repetitive, so you, how do you stand out, right? You can use all these tips initially, but at the core, it's all about being specific and vulnerable. My best example of this is I make content that's about my life here in California, right? So I share stories of people I meet in California one of them being a cute surfer boy I ran into. And I didn't want to share it with my audience. And I don't recommend to share things you're uncomfortable by, but I'm a different breed. And I like to make myself a little bit uh, vulnerable and bare sometimes. So I shared to my audience that I saw a cute boy at this beach called Murrow Bay. And I was sharing my experience being nervous, feeling like I wanted to ask his number, but I was so scared. The point is I shared my audience something that was specific and true. And while I was going to just to make a generic vlog about me showing the beaches, I decided to have a specific story and say, hey, this is what I do, but also here's a cute boy I ran into. And this created personality. This created vulnerability and authenticity, and I do do it intentionally. I have to force myself to tell you things I don't want you guys to know. And the reason why I do this is because it builds deeper connection. Now my comment section is filled with people who care about my love life and who are a little too invested in my Murrow Bay boy lover that I've never actually got his number yet. Fuck. The point is, I think it's super important that you can make whatever content you want, whether it's art, fashion, surfing, education. But try your best to showcase your personal anecdotes. You can start with phrases like, this happened to me today, or one day I had this happen. I would say bring up past stories, bring up current stories, share what you're currently about, whether that's integrated to your reply to comments, or for me, it's just doing a vlog and experiencing my life. You wanna build a brand that's memorable by being vulnerable first. All right, my last and final tip, guys. The eighth mistake you're making is you're too late on trends. Y'all be using trendy music and you're like, Jade, I'm using trendy audio, but like it's not working. Well, listen, dude, Paul, Stefan, Mark, it's because you're too late. Now, I used to do this fatal mistake. I used to think that if I used Doja Cat on a Sunday, my TikToks would blow up. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Imagine a graph. Imagine the graph is a small little upside down U shape. When the audio is trending, it's gonna be at peak popularity and the popularity over time diminishes. You can see this is a diminishing return. It just doesn't get bigger. What you wanna do is be at the time when it's just about to go viral, right? This is really strange. I only figured this out like three months ago, but the only way to be at the spot where it's just prime, it's just ripe, right? It's just like that mango that's juicy and flowing. I'm so hungry. The only way to 
get at its prime time with any trend or audio is to be early. It's to not follow the big accounts when you see Charlie Miller dancing. It's too late. It's literally too late. Don't try. What I would recommend is to follow smaller accounts. This is so strange, but you want to basically use an audio or trend when it's maybe at like 10,000 likes on a video. When there's not a lot of people doing it. There's like less than maybe a thousand people using a sound. Hop on that shit, okay? A good example of this is two months ago, I saw on my For You page this girl who basically made a video about her YouTube channel blowing up and it was this audio by Lady Gaga. And this audio I've never heard of before, but I saw the video had like 10,000 likes. So I saw that there was initial traction. I checked her profile and her name's Grace L and she has around 300,000 followers. So, you know, I can see that, you know, this trend is not blowing up just yet. So I recreated and got inspired from her TikToks, made my own version. And now this video that I got inspired from Grace has over 4.5 million views. Be early to trends by following smaller accounts. A lot of the times the For You page will send you content when it's at its earliest stage. So just keep an eye on that. If you're not consuming TikToks, I guess this is my ninth final mistake is you need to consume a lot of TikToks. Like I know it's really weird and why am I doing this? I'm really sorry. But it's so important as a marketer, a business owner to implement and research by consuming. I learn a lot by spending my afternoon scrolling on TikTok. Honestly, I know it sounds like a waste of time, but if you're serious about connecting with an audience, if you're serious about using TikTok as a platform to grow your business, you kind of have to stay on there and hang out there. I remembered last month, in my company, me and my team of editors and my community managers would go around and just talk about trends we saw on our For You page. I'm not joking. I never thought I would live in a society and world where my business meetings are just about, hey, what did you see on TikTok today? And it's basically changed the game. I have people that work in my company that send me TikToks to recreate, so I'm ahead of the trend. So whether that's creating a group chat of friends that you know, you're know you close and homies with, or you can follow my newsletter, Create a Block, where I give away the audios and the next trends that are available on TikTok, just be in the know and just recreate when it's early. That is the best way to make sure you're using TikTok to its full potential, being authentic, being vulnerable, being early and taking risks. Like TikTok is unpredictable as much as, oh my God, there's a dog. I personally love watching how to grow videos on YouTube, but there's no guarantee. The only guarantee, hi, 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 you're good. <laughs> um, like and subscribe. This is not my dog. <laughs> Sorry guys, that was weird. All right, where was I? I was saying that as much as I love watching marketing growth videos, there's no guarantee with any platform because when you're making art, it's a risk. When you're making anything that's creative, it might not work. When you're a content creator, you're doing things that you've never done before. So you have to give yourself A, patience, right? Because shit takes time to blow up, but B, understand the reason why you are creating content is to create art, it's to create things that are different. And sometimes there's no guarantee in things that are a risk. If you have a small business or you're trying to be a creator, don't give up, I fucking believe in you. And shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, all you gotta do is comment below. Let me know what was your favorite tip of the video and what you took out from this. Or if you didn't get anything out of this video, I hope that dog gave you a little bit of serotonin. All right guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe. Shout out to the comment winner. I already did this outro. Am I that hungry? Fuck, okay, bye guys. Love you all, peace.